What's happening, guys? It's TJ. LSU Dad. LSU Dad. Coming to you with another episode of That Is SEC News to Me. Yeah, I told you I was going to start spitting these out a lot faster because it's the season now. A lot is going on. And there's a story right off top that if you ever want to push my button, if you ever want to... You ever want to get into a fight with me? Bring up these two schools right here. Ohio and Michigan. Why am I so upset with them now? Because you guys know I don't like the Big Ten at all. But why am I particularly so upset with these two right here? It's because of him. Him. His Kirk has come out, right? And man, I'm so disappointed, man. This guy comes out with his top five. Top five schools, right? After after two weeks, he released what he thinks is his top 10. Check out who he thinks is in the top 10 after two weeks. All right, top five. Alabama, FSU, no problems with me out of that, even though FSU don't have no defense. So if you're going to get in the shootout, yep, they can put up 45 points. They've proven that. No defense, zero. Zip, zip defense, right? It's, these, it's this next... Michigan and Ohio, Clemson, yeah, it, it, you know, the word on the street is out on them. You know, you're only going to get so far with this read option thing. I think that will take care of Clemson before it's over with. But Michigan and Ohio? See, this is what aggravates me about these polls. What aggravates me about these polls is that I think Michigan, I think the Big Ten schools got together and, and you know, and they, they mapped this out like this. Right. Let's get somebody like Jim Harbaugh who could just create a whole bunch of hype. Get, you know, uh, just I call it pus. You know, it's not you know, there's real there's real muscle and then there's pus, you know, and it's, it's, that's what it is. It's not growth. It's not anything different. It's swelling. It swells up and it looks like something. But if you stick a needle in it, it's pus. And that bubble will pop sooner or later. But for now. I'm just going to enjoy this wonderful, naive world that people like those at ESPN exist in when they think that Michigan and Ohio are actually top five schools. And I base my, I base everything I say off of who are they facing, right? How you put them in the top five and they have the worst strength of schedule, guys. This strength of schedule thing has to count for something because it's in the equation of how we determine these rankings and who has the best shot to play for a national for playoffs if there's ever a tie. It comes down to strength of schedule. Michigan, Ohio have managed to get themselves in the top five, which means that all they have to do is just keep beating out all of these easy schools and then, you know, just by basic process of elimination, one of them should make it in the playoffs because they were ranked, right? They were ranked. They had this gift of rank handed to them. This is why USA Today said the Big Ten's opening regiment of opponents saddled it with seven of the worst strength of schedules out of ten leagues, right? They, the majority of the opponents that they played over the last two weeks, none of them were even ranked. And these two hurt. I don't know how you do it, Kirk. You got all this access at ESPN. You can go see people, visit people, talk to Nick Saban, talk to Jim Harbaugh. And you put these, this group right here in the top five. See, that's why I tell people all the time. I'm not worrying about going to no television, right? Because as right here, I can say what I want to say and I can say the truth. And that's crap to put to put those schools in the top five and the toughest opponent in the last two weeks with both of them combined was Bowling Green. Rest my case. On my last episode of SEC News, I brought you the story of Kentucky. And I said, you know, looks like they quit. Well, because you know I'm the football prophet. I didn't know somebody over there actually felt like that. <laughs> okay, Somebody over there actually felt like that, man. Linebacker for the Wildcats, um, Jordan Jones, man. This kid actually said that to a reporter. And I want to get him right. And I quote him. He said, sometimes when we're down, a lot of people on our team just 
tend to quit and think it's over, Jones said. I don't think it's over until it's actually over. I think as a whole team, we need to work and, and f work on and fight back, right? And, y you know, the fans, they're not happy about, they're not happy about this defense at all. Uh, and Florida, you should just know that you guys have, have I mean, wreak havoc of going through the Kentucky locker room, the Kentucky football community, because Kentucky people are serious about football too. I know they just, they have a reputation as just being a basketball school, but there are those in the Kentucky Wildcat community that, that are very, very serious about football and case in example, case in example, the last of uh, their defensive coordinator, right? Um, DJ Elliott, DJ Elliott, right? Somebody sent him something in the mail. And when he opened it, it was a box of penises. And this has been reported by Kentucky Sports Radio. It is currently one of the worst in the country, ranking 123rd out of 128. The FBS team and has given up 542 yards per game, right? And this is the reason why... Um, they got a lot that feel that they want him fired. And someone shipped him a bag of penis-shaped candy uh, using the web website digsbymail.com, according to a report from Kentucky Sports Radio. So it's getting real in Kentucky. <laughs> and I think those fans have every right to be upset. All right, um, the young man, uh, linebacker, I don't agree with him speaking to the media like that, but... Uh, it it may be time for some change at some level over in Kentucky. It's not my business, but I would be just as upset as the other fans if this was happening on the defensive side, just as I'm upset at LSU that it's happening on the offensive side. I ain't send nobody no box of penises, right? They didn't even think about it, but that's a good one. <laughs> and in other news, we have located Dan Mullen. Yeah, Mississippi State coach has been found. <laughs> you know, after that South Alabama loss, I was waiting for a dude to come on Feinbaum. Never showed up. You know, Paul Feinbaum had to apologize to all of us who were sitting around waiting. And then, you know, mysteriously, they win last Saturday, and there he is. There he is. It's not missing anymore. So that's how it goes. You win, you do interviews. You lose, nobody can find you. Okay, I just want to know, I just want to know how this thing go. So after my Tigers beat you Saturday, we don't have to expect there to be an interview after the game. I'm just trying to see how it go, okay? <laughs> yep, this is SEC News 2. Arkansas has won Miss America. <laughs> That's right. Hey, we claim that too. We claim she go to Arkansas, right? Isn't she a student at Arkansas? She's studying art and she has another, she's a dual degree, art and business, right? Is an Arkansas SEC school? Okay. Then we would like to congratulate um, Savvy Shields. She was crowned last night. Beat out a lot of people. My, my state came in number 15 in the competition. But we just want to congratulate her because, you know, SEC, we want to win everything. I don't care if it's double dutch, marbles, right, our horseshoe. Whatever there's a competition, we want to win it in the SEC. And I congratulate my hog family over there, Arkansas Razorbacks, and having one of their students to win Miss America. Congratulations. And in Auburn news, one of my favorite uh, analysts, Paul Feinbaum, went off <laughs> on Auburn, right? Yeah. Um, it appears that Paul, uh, Mr. Feinbaum is, you know, he's aggravated with this whole swapping out these quarterback things, man. And he went on, went on a tad bit rant. You know, Paul don't really rant that much, you know, but when he gets on it, he's on it and... Mr. Feinbaum said that, you know, he can't do that, this quarterback rotation any longer. 
Cosmazon made the national championship game three years ago, and he's an offensive genius, but he really looked like he didn't know what he was doing against Clemson. Tell me about it, man, because I picked Auburn to upset Clemson, right? I picked him, and because I knew they had the defense. To see them lose that game like that when the defense kept them in it, you know, that defense exposed um, Deshaun Watson, you know, they, they exposed him. You know, it's it's not that hard to do. But for the offense to not help those guys out at all, at all, right? Yeah, pretty, a little bit, a little bit upset about that, you know, a little bit upset about about that. I, I lost one on that one. But I agree with Paul on this one, Mr. Feinbaum, where I agree with you 100%. You know, this this quarterback thing in the SEC has to come together. You know, it's aggravating. It's a it's a challenge throughout the SEC, and I agree with Mr. Paul Feinbaum on that one. Next story. Yeah. It's time to put him in the conversation, guys. I don't see nobody talking about him, right? I was the first to bring it up. I was the first to mention it. And I mentioned it back in the summer. I said he is the most dangerous defensive back in college football. And after two weeks, after two weeks, I'm still waiting for the chatter. Still waiting for somebody to say something. Still waiting for his name to get interjected, inputted, transferred, transplanted into this Heisman conversation. It's not happening. This young man has been the majority of our offense, and he plays on defense, okay? Not only that, he's a, he's a dangerous punt returner. Saw it last weekend. You saw it against Wisconsin, right? I have looked around college football. This man right here should be in the national conversation for Heisman. He should be the front runner. Yeah, I know we got Leonard Fournette that should be in there, right? Geis is making a strong, you know, a strong, strong argument that he should be in there, right? But for two games, two consecutive games, this is your guy. And now a word from our sponsor. They have is pretty strong. Will Danny Etling be your starting quarterback next weekend? I don't know. That's a long way away from now. He better be. He better be. Uh, kind of got an opportunity there. The Guys, that's it. That's all I got. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on SEC News. I'm going to keep it coming. As the news come in, I'm going to keep it coming. Right. And I hope you're enjoying this segment. And I hit 4,000 subscribers on YouTube, man. Thank you guys so much. That was that was really hard to do. <laughs> that was really, really hard to do. But I thank you guys so much for the love and support because of you sharing my videos that happen. I don't make no money off of this. There ain't no money in this, right? I just love football, talking about football and hanging out with you. So, guys, thank you so much. And... Until the next one, until the next SEC news to be, it's TJ Alice, you dead.